Hey everyone, welcome back to Filmin 5D. Today we're diving into a practical upgrade for my new AV rack setup. I'll be upgrading my AC Infinity cloud plate units with new fans to bring the volume level way down. So in my new AV rack, I've got three AC Infinity cloud plate T9s keeping things cool. They're managing the heat from my rack mounted PC, my Mac Studio, router, modem, a couple of 8-bay drive enclosures, and some new audio gear. So what's the issue? These stock fans are loud, even at their lowest setting. And with the rack right next to my workplace right here, that noise just wasn't cutting it. To tackle this, I swapped out all three Cloudflate T9 stock fans with Noctua NF S12B Redux 700 fans, nine in total. These fans are thinner and lighter than the stock fans, making them an easy fit for the cloud plate chassis. Plus they run at lower RPMs, which helps keep the noise level down. To further reduce vibration noise, I added Noctua NA SA VP1 anti-vibration pads. These are optional, but definitely help dampen any additional noise from vibrating between the fan and the chassis. If you go with another model of Noctua fan, they might already be included, but these are the cheapest type of Noctua fans and they didn't come included, so you have to get them extra. So just look out for that. Before I dive deeper into the numbers of this upgrade, I threw together a quick step-by-step -step tutorial for this upgrade. So let's take a look at that. So to complete this upgrade, you will need a combination of tools, starting with a screwdriver, a soldering iron and some solder, tweezers, which are optional, some heat shrink or electrical tape. I bought a full box of heat shrink tubes on Amazon for 14 bucks. You also need a heat gun or you can use a lighter or a match. And finally, you're gonna need a wire cutter. So step one is to remove the six screws on the sides and take off the top grill. Step two is to remove the 12 fan screws and set the fans and the fan grills outside of the unit. Step three is to remove the four long screws from the control box and move it to the side. Now here you can either remove the glue from the fan headers on the board so that you can separate the fans completely from the board. But in three times of completing this upgrade, I found that simply cutting the wires close to the fans was the quickest and cleanest way to swap out the fans. Which leads me to step four, cut the wires as close to the fan as possible to give yourself some room to work with. You can always cut more later on after measuring. Step five, get your three new fans out and place them in the chassis. Use this opportunity to measure out how long your fan wires should be. Keep in mind that you don't want too much slack, especially with the thicker Noctua fan wires as those are harder to tuck away later on. Step six is to pull apart the wires on both ends, giving yourself at least three inches of separated wire. Then trim away the insulation on the wires using your wire cutter, revealing about one inch of bare wire. For step seven, if you're using heat shrink tubes, make sure to put the large one over all three wires on the board side, and then a small one on each of the three wires before continuing to the next step. If you are using electrical tape, you can skip this for now. Now this step is probably the most time consuming depending on your experience, but to save you some time, I can at least tell you which wires connect to each other. Your three pin Noctua fan will have three colored wires, a black wire for ground, a red wire for power, and a colored wire, in my case yellow, for speed control. On the board side, you can see here that the order is the same, with FG being control, plus being power, and minus being ground. You can see that the ground wire is marked with a long white line. The positive has other text on it, and the control wire is blank. This will help you not mismatch the wires later on, but I suggest you always double check before soldering. Step eight. Wrap the appropriate wires with each other and begin soldering. Now, I will say I'm not an expert when it comes to soldering and I recommend watching a dedicated YouTube video for this if it's your first time. But one thing I do know is you wanna get the wire nice and warmed up with the soldering iron. And you will know when you've made a solid connection because the solder will kind of seep in across the wire leaving a nice shiny chrome look to it. Now, once you've soldered all three wires together, give them a nice tug to ensure that the connection is strong. You don't want these wires coming apart down the line. Step nine, move the smaller heat shrink tubes over the three exposed wires, fully covering them, and heat them up with your heat gun or lighter. Take care not to melt the insulation on the wires themselves. And then optional is to use a larger heat shrink tube as well, across all three wires to keep them neatly tucked together. Take this opportunity to plug in your cloud plate to make sure that all your fans are working appropriately with speed control and everything, and you didn't mess something up along the way. If you bought the anti-vibration pads, now is a good time to install them on the side that will be connected to the chassis. Step 10. Screw back in the four screws you removed from the control box. Be careful not to smoosh any of the wires here. Step 11, place each fan and their corresponding grill back into the chassis. Take care that your fan is facing the right direction. The logo should be facing down if it's an intake configuration 
and up if it's an exhaust configuration. Then screw in your fans, all while making sure your wires are running along the sides of the fans. I recommend tucking the wires in both the top and bottom of the chassis. This step can take some finessing, as you don't want any of the fan wires to fall into the spinning blade. Just take your time with it and make sure that if there is any wire slack, that it's from the original fan side and not the more rigid Noctua insulation on the wires. And finally, step 12. Screw back in the six screws to connect the chassis to the grill. And that's it for the tutorial. Go ahead and plug it back in and make sure that everything is working as intended. Now that we're done with the tutorial, let's talk some numbers. The stock fans were hitting about 70 decibels at max RPM, while the Noctua fans brought that down to around 37 decibels. Now that's a huge perceivable difference in noise levels. These numbers can be a bit misleading because the difference between 37 and 70 decibels may seem like it would only be double in volume, but in real world perceived loudness, the volume difference is closer to 10X, which was very much noticeable in person as you can hear in this comparison clip. So here are some pros and cons of this upgrade. Let's start with the pros. Massive reduction in noise, up to 10X, depending on what fans you go with and what speed you use. You also still get solid cooling performance. Despite the RPM difference, Noctua fans are just more efficient than the stock fans at moving air at lower RPMs. You also get reliable Noctua quality. According to information I found online, these Noctua fans will last at least twice as long as the stock fans at more than 150,000 hours. But let's move on to the cons. It does require soldering for the fan connections because at least with Noctua fans, the connectors are too large for the pin headers on the board. Also, lower RPM means less airflow, about half the airflow of the stock fans. Now, if you're concerned about this, you can always opt for the 1200 Redux model, which will have similar airflow at lower volume. Now, this upgrade took me just over an hour, as you can see here, and yes, soldering is involved. You can find fans with smaller three pin headers and you might avoid soldering, but in my case, I had to connect the Noctua fan to the stock cable with a smaller connector. So let's talk price. What's the total cost of this upgrade? Now, assuming you already have the tools, you have a soldering iron, you have a heat gun, you have some of the other materials like heat shrink or electrical tape, you're looking at around $55 per cloud plate for the three fan version which I think isn't the worst value since you've already spent $140 on the cloud plate itself. Given the performance and the noise volume reduction you get, I think the $55 is worth it. Next, let's talk about settings. For optimal balance between noise and airflow, I set mine to auto at 80 degrees with a buffer of two and a speed of four. This setting helps keep the fans from constantly turning on and off, unlike smart mode. With auto, the fans turn on once the temperature is hit AKA 80 degrees, and it doesn't turn off until the temperature drops at least two degrees below 78. Now that number can change. You could set that to 85 and have it, have it turn off at 76 or something, but those are in increments of two for the buffer. But I think that's the best option because with smart mode, what happens is you set it to 80 degrees, but it'll actually turn on at 70 at one, and then it'll slowly increase until it hits to, when it's 80, you'll be at four, and then when it gets to 90, it'll be at six. And while that sounds good, because it's a smart mode and it's fluctuating based on how much airflow you need, what happens is it's constantly turning on and off because once it hits 70 degrees, it turns on, gets to 69, turns off. And that keeps happening over and over again. But with these fans, that might not be the worst because at least at volume level one, you're below 30 decibels, which is gonna be imperceivable with all the equipment you have in your rack. Now, another idea to further optimize noise levels is running the three cloud plates at different speeds since each speed will have a slightly different pitch. Of course, not everyone will have three cloud plates like me, but if you do have multiple, setting them at different speeds might be a worthy consideration, though I'm not gonna do that because honestly, setting it at four is already imperceivable to me at this distance. So that's my AC Infinity cloud plate T9 upgrade. The results, a drastically quieter workspace without compromising too much on cooling. Now, if you found this helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more audio and video content like this. If you'd like to see a further breakdown of my new home studio AV rack, let me know in the comments below, but I'll put links to any of the products I've mentioned in this video in the description below. Buying through my links is the best way to support the channel and help me make future videos like this one, and I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.